very brief history and the basics of distilling alcohol. Alcohol. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people that love it hate it the next morning. But no matter how your reaction is through it, there's no doubt it's a tradition held very closely to humans in general. Through the good times and the bad times, alcohol has become a staple in human society across the world. It has been human nature to, ma to make alcohol, and with its deep, rich, rich history, going back centuries with processes that we still use today. Clearly, alcohol isn't going anywhere anytime soon. This is a forecast or predictions of what the world is actually going to be spending. Uh, so even in 2024, it's a billion dollar industry and it's only on the rise. So, it's a large and flooded history, or flooded industry, and to understand it, we really need to look about its history and how, it, how we have come this far. Brief history. According to Rod Phillips, fermented beverages uh, started can be traced back all the way to 7,000 BCE, uh, back in ancient China, or what was known as that part of China. Uh, and there's still researchers have been finding evidence that it could have been started even earlier. But they found metal or clay pots, sorry, used to ferment rice and other grains and fruits to actually make alcohol. And what is really crazy about that is they figured out how to do this before some religions were even started or even thought of. Later, later spreading across the rest of the world, creating trade routes uh, between the ancient civilizations uh, and bringing in more influences and more fruits, different variations that it's now just be is now across the old world and become that tradition to make it and then later on in about four four thousand bce wine was now being uh made and generated across uh across the old world and it's the influence that we really see on it uh According to Cornell University, when Greece got a hold of wine, it affected their everyday life from literature, mythology, medicine, their leisure, and, and their religion. They had gods and deities dedicated to alcohol and the process and the harvest of it. Jumping forward to about 2000 BCE, where distillation has come into the thoughts of philosophers and makers. Uh, but it wasn't truly alcohol yet. They've only, they used it for perfumes and medicines, medicinal uses, but they've only, uh, they were only making like just simple rose spirits, rose water spirits. Uh, and then later down the line, they, fired, they figured out they could make alcohol with it. The Greeks and philosophers even thought about it. But then it wasn't until like more modern centuries, the 13th and 14th, where they found out you can make whiskey out of it and other processes to make it flavored. And that became its all in itself with different regions, different fruits, different grains. Each new civilization could make their own version. It took on the place that it was. Now, how to make alcohol. Make the, it is illegal to sell and make alcohol without proper permits, so I wanna warn everyone, it, if you do it, don't get caught. Uh, and it is very dangerous if done improperly. So, first you have your pot still. This is a large, this is a large canister, usually metal, stainless steel, or copper, traditionally, with a burner or heat, sur heat source right under it. Oh, where's my words? Uh, anyways, for the pot still to make an actual alcohol, 
you need to have it heated to 173 degrees, almost exactly, because if you risk pushing it too far, it can burn the mash or the wash, and it'll turn out burnt and gross from the uh, ethanol you're trying to distill. So at that perfect temperature, the ethanol vapors evaporate, travel along, down a couple of tubing to a thump box. With the thump box, this is where you truly uh, get a lot of your flavorings and how to make your derivatives from what you want. So if you were putting juniper berries, you can get gin. If you're putting other seasonal fruits or anything, you can get brandy and uh, other flavors that you want to incorporate. So uh, at the bottom of the thump box, there is water. Actually, so when the steam is getting pushed, it is churning, collecting all the flavors, and then it's going to be getting pushed out into this cylinder. where it's gonna get connected to the warm box. The warm box is filled with water, cold water, and has a coil running down it, actually, where, the, where this pipe connects to. Because when those vapors are coming out, of the, they are still in a vapor form, and it will start traveling down the, co down the coil, cooling off to get your liquid, to get that pure alcohol. So, and then it gets cut out into here. So you're not just done there. With the process of making alcohol, it is dangerous, like I said, and a lot of a lot of time it's from the first the first ten percent, the four shoot shots. This is where it contains bad uh, chemicals and methanol, which you never heard of going blind. That's where you that's what mostly happened. They just didn't know the signs to take it out yet. Leading on into your heads. They're not as great. Oh, there was words there, I'm sorry. <laughs> the heads, they weren't that great. Set them aside because they're not that rich flavor you want. Later on, then you get your hearts. Your hearts are what you want. They're the good alcohol, they're the flavor. You get a nice aroma, nice texture, nice sipping. Uh, later on is the tails. This is the, your back end of your run. You can use these, but it's preferred that you actually cut them with some of the hearts to get a larger batch. Thank you. <laughs>